Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals, and welcome back to League Unlock. My name is Eric. Got a little bit of Han Solo action for you beautiful folks today, and it is a rare step back down memory lane on today's episode as we are counting down the five most expensive LCS contracts of all time. And yes, this is going back to eras where the LCS had a whole lot of cash to be thrown around and a whole lot of mistakes to be made. There are definitely some themes throughout this, either the same team perhaps spending a lot of money on single players or just uh, trying the LCS trying to get life into the league and their team by going for potentially washed up free agents and listen that's a theme that we've seen over North American League of Legends basically since imports started happening going back I mean 2015 you were talking about uh, I mean Jensen coming over but that was before he was really an import but we know it's been a theme throughout the history of the LCS. So we got five players to talk about. And in classic esports fashion, listen, I would love to do this for all the regions. But it's hard to even get contract info on a lot of these signings that have happened over the year. It's not like you can just easily look up a player's salary and find out how much they're making on a per split per year basis. That information is just Difficult to come by. Teams don't share it. Players don't share it. And even some of the numbers on these five guys that we're about to talk about are not fully confirmed. We might never know the truth behind it, but we do know at least the basic numbers for these guys. And number five on this list was is maybe the most egregious of all five in terms of immediate results. And we are going to 2020... Dignitas Huni is what we're talking about. And this is the year after he was on Clutch Gaming. Clutch Gaming eventually rebranded into Dignitas and immediately re-signed Huni. It was the first time he stayed on a team for more than one year. They were giving him $2.3 million, which was meant to be spread across a two-year span. This is, listen, Huni was good. On Clutch, Clutch had that miracle run through the gauntlet to qualify for Worlds. Then they got put in the group of death where they went 0-6, but it was a difficult group. Huni was good. Was he worth $2.3 million in hindsight? Absolutely not. And the craziest and mo the reason this is the most egregious one on the list for me is he only played 20 games. He played a single split with Dignitas as part of what was supposed to be a two-year, $2.3 million deal. And when this was initially reported, they were saying the bulk of that $2.3 million gar was guaranteed, meaning he didn't even need to play out the full two years. I hope that wasn't the case because that was just a massive waste of money. If it was for Dignitas, he ends up getting traded to Evil Geniuses for the summer split uh, in that offseason between spring and summer. And then he's splitting time in the academy scene and the main LCS roster for Evil Geniuses. It was Kumo at the time that he was splitting time with. I mean, he ends up getting most of the starts in the playoffs. I don't know the full... Nobody knows the full financial details. Uh, people, I remember at the time it was, well, EG wants to buy out Huni because come the next year is when he's going to be a domestic. He won't take up an import slot. And that's when we sell him to make this money back, which is absolutely insanity. That this is, these are potentially the ways that organizations and teams were trying to milk and get money out of things. Uh, after this, by the way, Huni ended up going to 2020 TSM, which 2021 for TSM, which uh, we'll get to that roster a little further down on this list because there was some money being thrown around uh, by that era of TSM. But Dignitas, this is maybe the worst one on the list for me solely because he played 20 games in this contract. That's it. And because they spent so much on him. Uh, I mean, they didn't have any money left over to build a competitive roster. And 2020 Dignitas, believe it or not, was not a competitive team. Now, this is only number five, 2.3 million. I mean, it gets a whole lot more expensive. And number four on this list was a couple years before an even more expensive Korean top laner. 
But this time, the money pays off because we are talking about Big Daddy Impact. This was, this is 2017 going into the 2018 uh, year. And if you remember, this was, they're going to pay Impact over a million dollars a year to sign with Team Liquid, which way back then was absolutely insane and unheard of. I feel like it was the first million dollar deal that you were talking about for an esports player, uh, especially in League of Legends, probably in any game at this point. And this is the only one on this list that he actually played the whole contract. It was 3.4 million over three years for Impact. And he actually played for all three years, 2018, 2019, and 2020. He saw all these different eras of Team Liquid, and you could argue that it was worth the money because he ended up four-peating as the starting top laner for Team Liquid. This was heading in to franchising, so you know that Team Liquid was getting a whole lot of money. Immortals did not make it into franchising, so that 2017 roster that had Xmithy, Pole Belter, and Cody Sun, and Ole, three-fourths out of them, Ended up going over to Team Liquid. This was the super team where Doublelift comes in. Team Liquid hit franchising. Uh, they came out of the, the can. They got shot out of the cannon with some of that Disney money to immediately make this super team that, in hindsight, whether or not it ended up making the money, it was, it was worth the move because, again, they ended up winning so many games. And, uh, you know, this is peak top die impact coming over from Cloud9 where he was carrying them throughout playoffs. Cloud9 made it to quarterfinals the year before at the World Championship where they ultimately lost to World Elite. But this is this is maybe the highest oh excuse me stock that Impact had and he's been one of the most sought after free agents. Uh, especially in the top lane for years now, especially now because he's not taking up an import slot. He's still, I guess he wasn't even at this point. I, I don't, I don't remember, but he was one of the most sought after free agents. And again, the only guy on this list, I think that you could talk about actually being worth the money. Is it worth the money? A million dollars now that, you know, we're deep in this esports winter. It seems like none of these contracts were worth it when these teams were definitely just bleeding money throughout all of this. But again, he stayed for the entire three years, ended up picking up four LCS titles. They got to an MSI finals. I know they didn't get out of groups ever, but even when this super team era shifted and, um, you know, Pole Belt or Doublelift weren't there, it was Impact. He was the last remaining OG member of this Team Liquid super team lineup. Maybe they felt locked into him because they paid him such a ludicrous amount of money. But either way, he delivered, was a standout top laner. He got a couple of LCS All-Pro nominations throughout his stint with TL and was consistently a top three top laner at worst for basically the entirety of that three plus year stint that he had with Team Liquid in, in a space and an industry, esports, that is so rare to guys actually playing through an entire contract that they're signed up for. Impact is a diamond in the rough, not only for being such a fantastic team player, obviously, but I mean, he actually played through the contract and that's him liking Team Liquid and Team Liquid liking what was serving him. So the only one on this list to say, Two thumbs up. Great job, Team Liquid, and great job, Impact, sticking through and being one of the dominant forces in that top lane. We got a theme brewing already. Number three on this list because it's another Team Liquid member, and it was a teammate of Impact for many years. Jensen heading. This is post-Super Team Team Liquid when he came over. It was after 2020. He signed a three-year extension with TL worth a reported $4.2 million, almost a full million more uh, than Impact. And, you know, again, that was 2018 versus 2020, so very different at that point. But um, this was right when Bjergsen retired. So it was... Jensen, this is your league to run. We're going to throw all this money at you. We still got that Disney Marvel money to have with you because not only were they going to be paying Jensen over 
I mean, almost 1.5 million annually, assuming these numbers are correct. They also signed Alfari this year and they were gonna be paying him a million per year. So it's no wonder these teams ran out of money when Team Liquid, the memes of Steve always shooting out money, just throwing it in all these videos. There's a reason they exist because they had over $2 million locked up to two out of their five starting players Whereas the Impact one, you ended up winning back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back LCS titles. You were hands down the most dominant squad in the LCS for that entire tenure. 2021 TL, it wasn't it. Uh, I mean, they they had their runs. They Jensen, that year, because by the way, three years, he only ended up staying one year after he signed this contract with Team Liquid. He was there 2019 and 2020. But he signed after 2020, had one more year with them before he ended up returning to Cloud9. So we only played one out of these three years. Again, the financial details of how much money is guaranteed, how much Cloud9 had to pay to buy him out. Those get a little gray and fishy. We don't know the full details, but he only played one of those three years. And he was great in that year. He had some incredible world's performances. Time and time again, we were talking about him sometimes coasting through the LCS regular season and playoffs and always turning it up internationally. That was absolutely the case. So, I mean, if you're saying, was this contract worth it? You got to be looking at how much did you get back? How much did Cloud9 have to pay you? Uh, that's, again, where the financial details get a little bit murky, but he was the face of TL, especially once you saw Doublelift stepping away. He was one of, if not the premier mid laners in the LCS for that year when Bjergsen wasn't there and I really think that jetted up his contract Bjergsen stepping away because it was always Bjergsen or Jensen Bjergsen or Jensen most people always say Bjergsen because he won the head-to-head -head. but as soon as that marquee talent of Bjergsen stepped away all of a sudden your stock for Jensen went to the moon and I'm sure all these teams were inquiring and I mean if he was smart he really bumped up uh this pay race that he got to stay on TL. So big ups to Jensen uh, for getting that bread, getting that bag. And even if the results weren't necessarily there, they didn't win a title in 2021. They did, I, I think they got some runner, a couple of runner up finishes um, that year, but never able to get it done on the big dance uh, in the LCS. Again, he, he won a couple before, but again, we gotta, we gotta break this up into pre new contract, post new contract with Team Liquid and um, this was the example of him not uh, winning another title. But still, shoutouts to him. He was loyal to Team Liquid. I don't think he, uh, I mean, we, again, it's all the stuff we don't know behind the scenes. He wanted to go to Cloud9 or Team Liquid didn't want him. It gets it gets confusing. But either way, they were paying big money to re-sign Jensen and he didn't end up staying the whole time. Then we get to some of these insane free agent signings. Um, you know, Jensen was re-signing. Impact was a free agent, technically. Hooney was re-signing. But the biggest splash and far and away the craziest um, offseason is the 2021 year. And, of course, we're starting with the man who came to dominate NA. He didn't come to retire. It's Cloud9 with the insane buyout for perks. And technically, if you're going... Fully just financial, perks might actually be the most expensive one because you got to include the buyout, right? So it's it was rumored about 2.7, I think, he was making per year over three years. And then on top of that, you're talking about a $5 million buyout that they had to do to get him from G2. And a clause in that contract was Cloud9 could not ever trade perks to Fnatic, which these are these are clauses that you see in you know the nfl and the nba all the time you will give you this star quarterback but you can't trade him to a division rival it was the exact same thing g2 didn't want to see perks lining up in the black and gold against them in their main rival uh so i mean as insane as it was and they ended up being some legal things looked into this, but either way, if they did actually pay $5 million up front just to get him and then had to sign him to be paying him over $2 million a year, it doesn't matter that he found some success in the LCS. That is, that's an insane investment. Now, in hindsight, 
Apparently, Jack, as you know, the owner of Cloud9, said that they didn't lose any money on this deal because after Perks only spent one year in the LCS, and we'll get to those, but after that, they sold him to Vitality for apparently a reported 2.5 million euros, which is, you know, approaching over 3 million if you're talking US dollars, but <sighs> you spent 5 million and you still had to pay him one year of contract, which was let's say two and a half to be on the low ball. So you're at seven and a half and maybe you get three back. I can't believe you didn't. I'm not believing that you spent, you sold $4 million worth of Perks Cloud9 merch over that year. Maybe, I mean, Cloud9 is one of the few still profitable, actually in the green esports organizations that we have around the globe. So maybe they were doing, uh, have been doing something right that it ended up being profitable, profitable for them. I will say, Cloud9 were one of the most dominant teams during that year. He won the spring split in his very first split with the squad. They went to MSI. I mean, MSI was a mixed bag. They obviously ended up not making it into top four, dropping games to Pentanet. So the ebb and flow that Perks and Cloud9 had throughout that whole year were, oh man, what a ride it was, but they still ended up going to Worlds. They got out of that group of death because, and you could just look at the microcosm of that Worlds event in itself to see the level that Perks was at. There was at times he looked like the best mid laner in the LCS, and there were times we were saying, yeah, it looks like he is here to retire. And then at Worlds, you got moments where he's not pressing the Trindamir ulti, and you got moments where he's getting game-winning flanks on the Blanc to send the team into quarterfinals. But an LCS title, a berth at MSI, and a top eight finish at Worlds, that's that's the most successful year that you have on these five uh, players on this list. I'll tell you that right now. So was it worth the investment? I mean, if they didn't lose any money, then it absolutely is. But I, I find it hard to believe that they weren't a little bit in the red after this absolutely massive investment to get perks across the pond and over to the LCS. But either way, it's it's a fond memory. If you are a Cloud9 team, there were mom or a Cloud9 fan, excuse me, plenty of moments uh, to remember the highs and forget about the lows that perks had when he was over in the LCS. You might be saying, how? is a $5 million buyout and that 2.5, 2.7 million per year, not the highest on this list. Again, I'm not including the buyout and I think everybody knows what the number one on this list for most expensive LCS contracts. It has been memefied to no ends. The $6 million man TSM Sword Art. They're no longer a part of the LCS, but the brand and the legacy of TSM lives on in infamy for signing the 2020 World Finalist Sword Art to that two-year, $3 million per year. And this one did not live up to the hype. And immediately when this was announced, I think most people were saying, have you lost your mind, Reggie? And then Reggie had these Absolutely, he did an interview with, I think it was the Washington Post afterwards with some absolutely ludicrous comments that he's expecting, you know, world finals is what this roster should be looking towards and that's what they got with Sword Art. Well, you don't have Bin and Juan Fang on this TSM roster. He, they're not getting dragged to the world finals in 2021 and uh, he even said it's a really small investment down the road because TSM, they're gonna be like the Dallas Cowboys, the Los Angeles Lakers of esports. Well, now you're not even in the LCS, Reggie. So that doesn't look so great in hindsight, but Sword Art, you remember this off season became a bit of a mess because this is when Doublelift leaves TSM and he's spoken a lot about not knowing what was going on in that off season. And he might've stayed if he knew Sword Art was coming. It became an absolute disaster, but it ends up being lost that's on that squad playing alongside sword art and in hindsight you know there were some okay moments for tsm they finished first in this wonky regular season that was cumulative from spring so your record carried over from spring into summer they finished first in the regular season they didn't get to a finals but they got to a finals weekend got a top three finish this is the roster with lost as i mentioned power of evil speaker and 
as we alluded to earlier, Hooney, fresh off, still making some money from Team Dignitas, comes over to TSM and says, man, I thought my 2.3 million was pretty good. Sword Art's over here making that per year. We know Sword Art only stayed for one year. Don't know the details of what was guaranteed, but you assume he made at least 3 mil playing on Team Solo Mid. And you know what? Credit to Sword Art. He came and he was here to work. He wasn't just cashing in and retiring. He was fully invested. You saw how emotional he was in a lot of these TSM games. But anyone seeing this uh, on paper and when it was announced, we were left scratching our heads. It's, I know he got to the World Finals, but I don't think anyone in the right mind was saying Sword Art was the top reason why that Sooning squad had that impressive run to the World Finals. Obviously, uh, Bin ended up becoming one of the best top laners on the planet for the years to follow. S of M was playing at an insanely high level, and Huan Fang was a beast in that event. And obviously, there were so many different things as to why Sooning made it to the Finals. And as you saw Sword Art post-TSM, that's when you really started talking about getting uh, being perhaps washed up still an icon from the game and everything but this 2021 is uh the jensen contract the perks contract and the sword art contract so i don't know what was going on i don't know what was in the water in the lcs and around the esports ecosystem heading into that year that these teams decided this is it this is when the lcs goes for it we're closer than ever between the lck and the lpl let's just throw a whole lot of money and put some star studded rosters together it didn't work now we're in esports winter and you're whatever you were paying for sword art you're lucky to have a whole team fielded with that amount of money um so 2021 really was the glory days or the horror days in terms of throwing money around but the sword art and uh the sword art one definitely lives in infamy and tsm will be remembered forever for that one but that is it today for league unlock my name is eric thank you all you beautiful people for hanging out and watching as always and we will catch you lovelies on that flippity flip